So now let's talk a little bit about endpoints. So right now I have this single endpoint on the index, but if I wanted to create more, it's fairly simple to do. So I'll create a second one. I'll call this one home and I'll create a view function. The name of the function doesn't have to be the same as home, but for simplicity purposes, I'll make it the same. And then I'll return, you are on the home page. So I'll save this and I'll start up my application again, guestbook.py. And now if I type in home, I now see you are on the home page. And if I type in something else, like let's say store, this doesn't exist, so it returns not found. But as long as it exists, and I have two endpoints at the moment, home and the index, it will return something for me. So I'll just keep playing around with home. And uh, one of the cool things you can do is pass in arguments in the endpoint. So if I do this home slash and then uh, a variable name, so let's say um, place. This place is actually going to be a variable. To use this variable, it's going to be a parameter here in this uh, home function. So I'll name it exactly the same. So these two should match up. And then I'll simply return that variable inside of my route. So if I take this place and I put it in between these two plus signs here, so it should say you are on the whatever place you pass in page. So I'll save this. And one of the nice things about debug mode in Flask is if you have it enabled, the application will automatically restart every time you make a change. So you can leave it running and change the files in the application. It will detect that and automatically restart the server for you. So your changes will be there when you go to test. So now if I go to home and I type in um, YouTube, you are on the YouTube page. If I type uh, Google, you are on the Google page. If I type admin, you are on the admin page. And if I type nothing and just leave home, I get an error because it's expecting a variable. So just keep that in mind when you have those. Uh, you can use defaults, but I, I want to keep things simple. So I just want to show you basic variables like that. But all the routes that we're going to use in this tutorial follow the same pattern. Uh, one other thing you should know. So I'll take out the uh, variable here and I'll just have it home again. Home page. Is there can be different methods on it. So by methods, I mean the type of requests that is getting sent over. So anything that is sent from a browser, uh, the browser address bar that is, is going to be a get request. So if I add this uh, second argument for methods and I say get, that means this route will accept get requests. And if I add more to the list, it will accept get requests and post requests. Uh, typically when you don't, um, at this explicitly, you are intending for the route to only be called uh, through Git requests. So that's the default. But if you want to add more uh, power and more fine grained request types to this, uh, you can create the list here. So in this video, if anything is supposed to be a Git request only, I won't add anything. But if I need it for post requests, for instance, then I'll add post requests here. So let's take out Git, save this and run it and see what happens uh, when I call home. It says method not allowed because I'm trying to get requests, but the route only allows post. So if I do get again in there, save it, and then call this. And I forgot to take out the uh, argument here. So now if I run it, and since I did get an error, it's nice to see what it looks like when um, you have debug mode enabled. It tries to give you as much information as possible on what caused the error. So in this case, it says a type error. Home takes exactly one argument and none were given. Um, depending on the error, this will be different. And it gives you uh, a trace back of the error to help you find out exactly what went wrong. And this is enabled when you have debug mode on. Uh, debug equals true. If you didn't have debug mode on, you'd simply get an internal server error, which wouldn't give you information on exactly what caused the problem. Obviously, in a production app, you wouldn't want debug mode on, but when you're just developing the app, this is very useful to you. So now let me go back to the home endpoint, and it says you are on the home page again. And because I put that get method in there, I can now access it again. So 
you might have noticed that in the two routes that I've created so far, I'm returning HTML. And that's nice, but if I wanted to have a page with more HTML in it, I wouldn't want to type in all of the HTML here. Uh, that would be quite tedious and it would make the code hard to read. So to handle this, I'm going to show you how to use templates in the next video. And templates are just HTML files that have some extra functionality built in so you can do more than just show HTML, but their main purpose is to show HTML. So I'll show you how to use those in the next video and it will make everything uh, much simpler in your routes when you're returning HTML.